today when you say open relationships or non-monogamous relationships or periodically non-monogamous or monogamous, shall I dance savage, <laughs> or, you know, or polyamorous, it, or people will say, can't work, impossible, you know. The fact is monogamy is the new frontier. But you can have it as negotiated through divorce or mm. through what most people have always done, which is proclaimed monogamy and clandestine adultery. Or you can do it through a model of transparency in which people have consensual non-monogamy. This is it. Mm. This is the options. Right. What do you think is going to be working the most There's going to be a little bit of everything. Mm. There are some people who really need stable, committed, monogamous relationships. They don't want open doors. Mm -hmm. And there are other people for which open doors probably should be the model from the start. That's kind of who they are. That's their curiosity. That's the way they live their life. And it's not because they're less committed or less loving. It's because their sexuality is organized in a certain way and it lives together with a certain arrangement. And all of that is going to be redefined mm. as we go along. Um, it's de facto what's going to happen. It yeah. will be the next frontier. But if you see it on the level of marriage, people say, you know, if you say, okay, let's look on the, you know, you have to look at it from the place of before marriage. Mm -hmm. You know, a Swedish philosopher said, today, monogamy only exists in reality. It doesn't exist in your memories and it doesn't exist in your fantasies. Mm. So, this is not because I advocate it. It's just, there's a, first of all, there's nothing to advocate. It's very simple that by definition we have multiple sex partners mm -hmm. before marriage. We are not monogamous anymore in the traditional sense of the word. The word has been in flux and we don't really know where it's going. Mm. We don't. What we know is that people still seek to connect. People want to love. People want somebody who loves them. And how that will play itself out is the mysteries of life. But the fundamental human need for love, for connection, for passion, for transcendence will never change. The expressions, the forms, the institutions in which we will seek those fundamental human aspirations will continuously transform. That's really mm. how I see the, the evolution taking sure. place. Sure. What do you think of what I'm saying? Oh, man, it's just so, you know... It's confusing because you hear so many different options that work, that don't work. You see people that love each other that go through breakup and divorce. You see, and then you see the pain and the struggle and the emotional toll that it takes on some people. Then you see people who are in, you know, committed monogamous relationships who feel guilty because they want to be able to explore, but they, they can't because they've made this choice mm -hmm. and they've committed to it. Monogamy is a practice. Mm -hmm. We are not by nature, biologically, evolutionary, monogamous. It's right. a practice. It's a choice. And it's a choice. Not our makeup. No. Yeah. And it's a choice. Then of, and, it, and monogamy is a continuum. Uh, you, mono, you know, you have mind, you have fantasy, you have memory, you have a lot of things. At what point do we become mm. non-monogamous? Where does non-monogamy start? And all of these concepts are fluid concepts today. There is just no way to define it like that. Right. So we make our choices and we make compromises and we sometimes don't just do what we want and we often need to think about the consequences of our actions mm -hmm. and we need to think about the larger picture and something that may be perfectly desirable for tonight may not be worth it right. for the next weeks and the next years. But yeah, exactly. And I think that... In the era of self-fulfillment and the right to happiness, we don't have more desires today than the previous generations. We just feel more entitled to fulfill our desires. And we feel that we have a right to be happy. My personal happiness. The switch, the greatest switch, is from a, a, a social organization in which I think about the well-being of others. Collectivist thinking thinks about the well-being of others and I sacrifice my own individual needs for the well-being of others. To the other side of the continuum is I have a right to pursue my individual mm. needs and the others will have to adapt to it. 
And I think that we are a little bit on the extreme end of the other side at this point. Mm. We really take ourselves a little very seriously. <laughs> and sometimes at the detriment of other people to whom we do have an obligation and, and, and a commitment to, not just our partners. Right. Our f- the world. Uh, the world. So where should world. we be? Somewhere in the middle, you think? Or what's... In an examined state. I don't know that it's always in the middle, but in an examined state, in a state that doesn't just say what I like, what I feel, the fact that I have Mm -hmm. options doesn't mean I have to exercise all these options. The problem of consumer life is that we don't know anymore to make choices. Same with the cereals in the supermarket. Why would it be better with love? So I could get better. I could get better. I'm like, you know, I'm a victim of FOMO. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm a, how do I know this is the best? No, you don't. Yeah. When do I find the best? No, you don't. You don't find your partner. You choose your partner. It's very different. You know, if you think you're going to find somebody who is the person who's going to make you stop looking, it doesn't work this way. Because really? No, it doesn't. Because at some point, your inner rumblings will start up again, and then you will say, oh, probably you Start looking. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like you just say, this is it. This is where I decide to put my my roots in this mm. moment you know and i'm gonna and i'm gonna try to deepen them i think we are all living with paradoxes of choice yes you know from uh, from which phone i get but we cannot commodify a partner and just kind of beta test the partner and beta test the relationship and check out to see is it good enough or can i find better L- you, yes you can the fact is you could find other i'm not sure it would be better but you definitely can find other. Yeah. And there are lots of people you can love, and there's only a few you can make a life with. And they're not always the same. There are a lot of people you can have love <laughs> stories with. Right. And have beauty, but they're not the person you would make a life How with. How do you know when it's the person you can make a life with? I think values enter into there a lot more. I mean, mm-hmm. you can have l- magnificent love stories with people you would never live with. Right. They're just too different from you. They have not the same values as you. They have not. Th- you, they, 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 one wants child, one does not. One wants t- uh, to travel, the other does not. One wants career, the other. The mm. Very major, different classes, different, different Weltanschauung, as they used to say in German, you know, v- visions of the world. Mm. But yes. you can love them. Yes. You can have a beautiful love story with that person and be transported in your experience with them. But you know that that's not the person with whom you're going to build mm. a home, a future, a, l- a trajectory, f- maybe a family if you want that. Um, that That's not the person with whom... And for that, you need more of shared vision, shared mm-hmm. mission, shared values, stuff that is not just in the domain of feelings but also in the domain of beliefs. Mm -hmm. Um, It's different. Views about money, views about independence and separateness versus connection, views about um, emotional expressiveness, views about power. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you say that those differences that we have also attract us to other people, that we have some of those differences? Maybe we don't share the same values or beliefs, but it's also different, unique, interesting, and so it also brings us together, or do you think it's not enough? I think that what attracts you originally is often what becomes the source of conflict later. Mm. The very thing that is so attractive because it's different is also the very thing that becomes difficult because it's different. Interesting. So, of course, it's a mix and match, you know, yeah. but what makes thriving relationships is not only feelings. It's a mix of feelings, actions, beliefs, touches, <laughs> physicality. Right. It's a, right. it's a, a, a more all-encompassing thing. Sure. A beautiful love story can be just about feelings. Mm-hmm. So, and you can l- love more people than those that you can make a life with. That doesn't mean you make a life with people you don't love. But it means that there is a whole other set of ingredients right. that enter into the making of a life which is the creation of a world it's a little different Mm -hmm. and in that world you often can be on the side of you know there's a lot of sentences today that i never heard 20 years ago in couples therapy this is a raw deal i'm not getting my needs met where is my return on investment excuse me excuse me somebody owes you it's Mm -hmm. like 
wow, it's, it's, I am in a relationship for what it's going to give me. Um, that is an important piece, huh? don't misunderstand me. But I'm also in a relationship for, why, for what I'm going to give to this person, right. for what I'm going to give, if I want children, to these children. Not just for what they're going to bring to me. It's like the level of narcissism has to be shrunken a tiny bit on occasion. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> it's just like, you know, I mean, I'm part of that same, you know, landscape. But on sure. occasion, I think it's like you calibrate it. On occasion, some, some of us need to really learn to think more about ourselves. Mm -hmm. And some of us really need to think more about others. Right. Some of us live with the fear that we're going to be abandoned. And some of us live more with the fear that we're going to lose ourselves. Some of us mm -hmm. are better takers and need to learn to give. And some of us are consummate givers and we need to learn to take. And often we find a partner who is exactly the missing link. And that can be beautiful complementarity if we actually get to use the other person to become more whole right. and to learn from them. And it's it's and we need both. You need to be able to think about yourself mm -hmm. and to know what you want and all of that. But you also need to be able to remember that others exist near you, right. your family, your friends, you you know, you build your loved ones. Sure. And that that's what will make the difference the day you die and who will show up at your funeral, mm -hmm. basically. I love this conversation. I have four questions for you left. Yes. Uh, I feel like I could ask a lot more, and I want everyone to make sure they pick up the book, Mating in Captivity. We'll have it linked up here at the end. Um, the first one is, what are you most grateful for recently in your life? Recently in my life, uh, I had a kind of a medical scare, so I'm mm. actually very grateful that it turned out to be nothing. A small boo-boo, not a big one? It was a big boo-boo. I thought it was a big boo-boo, but it ended up being a that's small great. one. So that's, uh, <laughs> I'm, that's actually probably the first one that comes to me. Um, I have, um, you know, I spent most of my career mo in the professional academic world, and in the last two or three years, um, I've really crossed over to the mainstream. Mm -hmm. Um, and that has entered me into TED and Aspen and the entrepreneur space and Summit and uh, Ciudad. I mean, it's worldwide. And, um, and I think that it's been a wonderful um, taking what I've done in the four walls of my office to a larger platform and being actually a psychologist, not just in the therapeutic space, but in the larger cultural in the space world, yeah. in the world. That's been a great thing. Going digital. Um, the idea that I can actually um, help people and, and give people an elevated conversation about relationships and that embraces the complexity and that meets them where they're at through my online courses and through this whole new platform, that's been a trip. It's been a fantastic creative uh, journey mm. for me. It's been just one year. Right. So I'm very grateful for that because it's been fun, creative, new, very different for a therapist actually mm -hmm. um, to move into kind of thought leader if you want and being part right, of a right. great, a more global conversation. Sure. Great. Um, and I, that's, I'm actually, in many ways, I'm much happier today because, because I've become more... Um, if I miss something, I no longer think, oh, shit, I would never get it. <laughs> it's like I used to want, you know, I'm like, okay, it's all right. I don't have to have gone to three things. You know, right, 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 exactly. Full, uh, to go back to the beginning of our conversation, I feel that the day is full even if I haven't binged. Mm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I good. used to need to binge for sure. the day to be full. I no longer feel like that. I like that. <laughs> Uh, good things to be grateful for. Uh, second question is, if someone's looking to get into, find a partner, a long-term partner, a committed relationship for, you know, or a marriage, what's one piece of advice you would say to go enter into that relationship to find that relationship? If you could give one piece of advice. Yes. Ask yourself, what do I want to give to someone? Don't just ask yourself, who do I want to meet and what, uh, what characteristics do I want in that person and make a list 
of all the things that the other person needs to have. Mm -hmm. Think in the reverse. What do you want to bring to somebody? What do you want to bring in, you know, what's the love that you want to put out into the world? The love, the caring, the, the benevolence, you know, over for another person. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that's probably much better than the checklist that most sure. people go, go dating with. Here's what with. I want. Yes. yes. Here's, Here's what, what you need to be for me, mm. for me to then be interested in you. You know, right. be compelling to someone else rather than ask, wait for them to dazzle you mm -hmm. so that you can swipe in one direction or another. <laughs> right. Okay. You know, um, and um, that probably would be the first thing I would say. And and that's it. That okay. would be the most like important it. one. And don't think just like is this the best. You're not buying a product. Mm. No, it's not the best. Just decide in advance. But neither are you. It's just the one that you say, this is it. Because often, you know, you pick somebody because you're ready. But there were plenty of others you met before that could have been fantastic partners for you. Right. It's just you were not there in your life. Right. You were not ready for that, that uh, commitment, that decision. So you were ready to have beautiful experiences, relationships, lovers, you know, and you love these people, but you were in your 20s. What did you know about life, you right. know, about wanting to build something? Now you're 33 and you say, okay, now I want to do it. So it's the timing, it's your maturity that makes you make the choice, not the, only the person mm -hmm. that you are being dazzled by. And if you want to learn more about mastering relationships, then make sure to check out this video right here. Till death do us apart, when de facto, for the majority of couples today, it's till love dies, not till death do us apart. That's when we divorce, yeah. we break up, when yeah. love dies. Yes. Yeah.